Ladies and gentlemen, it could not get better than today. I have in front of me a 2020 Porsche Cayenne. This is the base model, but I could not care less because it's an awesome machine. And today I'm gonna to be discussing with you the ins and outs of this car. We're gonna take it for a test ride. I'm gonna show you the electronics. We're gonna take, take a look at the seating, how comfortable it is, and all that stuff is to come. For now, if this is your first time checking out my YouTube channel, and I'm assuming that it is, please make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to my channel. If you take a look at my channel, I have a lot of uh, reviews for motorcycles, but I'm gonna be doing reviews for cars very, very soon, starting with this Cayenne. So if you like what you see, please make sure to subscribe. And so for now, let's hit it off with this amazing intro. So let me start off by saying that first and foremost, Porsche is and has always been a sports car company. So they're considering this car to be a quintessential sports car. Now, if you go to their website, you're gonna notice that Porsche does not talk anything about an SUV. In fact, the term SUV is not even on their website. They consider this car a quintessential sports car. And it is a quintessential sports car in the fact that it comes in 12 different flavors. And we're gonna get into that in a second. So if you're in store to buy a vehicle like this, look to spend anywhere between 67,500 for the space model that you're looking at here, all the way upwards of two, over $200,000. Even this particular base model, if you wanted to purchase it today, and you go to the Porsche website, you decide to option it out, you can get $5,000 wheels, you can get a $10,000 carbon package. You can get matching side mirrors to your paint color scheme. I mean, there's an endless amount of options that you can add to a Porsche vehicle. The options that are available in this car are huge and you can price this car out, even the base model, to be $150,000 if you wanted to. Other than that, the car comes powered by a V6 turbocharged engine. It produces 335 horsepower and the maximum amount of horsepower this car can produce is 541 when you get the one with the most options, of course, and of course the most expensive one will produce about that much horsepower. Curb weight on this vehicle with oil, everything, you're talking about 4,582 and a full towing capacity of 7,700 pounds. Now that's a lot of towing capacity. If you're a person like myself and you have motorcycles and you wanna take them to the track and back, I don't think that's gonna be an issue for you considering that motorcycles on average weigh anywhere between 370 pounds, which is pretty light, we're talk and then we're talking all the way up to five, 600 pounds. So with the trailer and everything, I think this, this car can definitely do it. So the last thing I wanna to touch up on is that in and around the city, it'll do 23 miles per gallon and on the highway, it'll do 27, which is pretty good for a substantial vehicle like this. And it has a fuel tank that is 23.7 gallons in total. So I kid you not, there are 12 different variations of this car. There are six variations that you're looking at, which is this particular model here. Then they have six variations of the coupe model. Now this is way too much information for me to remember. So I brought my little handy cheat sheet for you guys. All right, check this out. The model that I have right now, is the base model and at $67,500. So in case you wanted to get the e-hybrid version, you're looking at 81,800. The Cayenne S, which is one step above this, is 85,100. The Cayenne GTS, 107,300. 
you've got the Cayenne Turbo, which is 127,800. Holy cow, for a Cayenne? No way. Yeah, seriously. Okay, you ready for this one? The Cayenne Turbo S E Hybrid. Go ahead and say that really fast. Cayenne Turbo S E Hybrid. Eh, it, when you're on a party, try explaining to somebody what kind of car you have. Yeah, I have a Cayenne Turbo S E Hybrid. How much is that? It's a whopping 163,200. Come on, everybody could afford that. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, for the top of the line version of this particular car, without the additional options that you're gonna eventually add onto it, it is 163,200. Now, I did my own shopping online and I did add all the options that I wanted. You wanna know what the total was? It came out to $216,000 to the way I like the car to be. $216,000 for a Porsche Cayenne is a lot of money. So as I mentioned, this is the base model. This is the model that is not the coupe version. So if you wanted the coupe version, look to spend 76,500. The coupe model version considers it to be a coupe, but in my opinion, the coupe is two doors, meaning there's no door back here. So considering that Porsche calls this the quintessential sports car, in my opinion, it not only is a sports car depending on the trim that you get, but let's be realistic here. This is an SUV. So for an SUV to be a coupe, you would consider it to have two doors, right? One here, one on the other side. But in fact, the coupe version of this car has the same amount of doors, except it's a little bit slanted. So I'm particularly a person who is a stickler for looks and for detail. So if you're like me, you would probably opt in for the coupe version. Tire and wheel choices for this car come anywhere between 19 inches and 22 inches. So if you wanted the full 22 inch package with the tires, you're looking at over $5,000. But this particular one is a 20 in 21 inch model and you have the Pirelli Scorpion Vero tires on this thing. If they've included them inside this car, it's gotta be good, right? So like myself, being a Porsche file, you probably already know this. When you're purchasing a new Porsche for the first time, the optional extras that you can add on the vehicle is just enormous for the vehicle as well as the interior. So I brought my little cheat sheet once again to show you guys what all the extra performance enhancements you can add to this vehicle to make it perform just as good as a 911. So if you wanted your vehicle to perform like a 911, which weighs 4,582 pounds, you can add a couple of different things and I'll explain to you each one of them one by one, what they mean, what they do for the car and how it'll make your ride better. So let's start off with the Porsche 4D chassis control system. The Porsche 4D chassis control system will give you similar to something like an IMU for a motorcycle. It stands for Inertial Measurement Unit, and it's, a ba it's basically a three-axis system that calculates the best driving conditions depending on where you are, where you're going, depends if you're going on twisty turns, or racing on a track. It'll, it'll help get you there in a very, very sporty way. That's the whole purpose of it. Next is Active Air Suspension. It basically changes the spring and the ride height adjustment for the vehicle. So depending on if you're traveling on the road, or if you need it to be lowered a little bit by a couple of millimeters, you're in the track situation, or maybe you're going in the canyons, that's what that's for. The next is PASM. Porsche Active Suspension Management is for whenever you want to, you want to change the engine mapping from normal to sport mode to sport plus. That's considered PASM, and PASM is mostly included in the 911 sports cars, but now in 2020, which is a crazy time in history to be considering all this, these technologies in an SUV. Oh, I shouldn't have said SUV, I mean, I meant quintessential sports car for Porsche, you get to have it in something like this, which, which weighs over 4,500 pounds. It just boggles my mind. Rear axle steering is the next thing I want to talk about. And with rear axle steering, just like in the 911s, when you're making a turn, it makes it a lot easier in and around town. And of course, when you're on a race track, it's a lot easier to move in, in between corners. And last but not least, we got the Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control. It's basically for improved handling and for body roll and turns. Whenever you're driving your car and you're making a right or left, you usually feel the body turning left and right. This basically improves that. So these are pretty much all the different enhancements that you can put on the car. As I mentioned in the beginning, the base price in this car is 67,500, but with all the options that you could add on top of, on top of it, even for a base model, you're looking at $150,000. So the person who's gonna spend that kind of money to buy this kind of car, might as well just buy a higher end version of it than, than getting a base model and adding on all the extras. All right, you're buying an SUV. What I meant to say was 
quintessential sports car. The thing I like about this quintessential sports car, with all the other SUVs, all you have to do is put your feet down here and then touch this right here and boom, it opens right up. I'm assuming you're gonna do road trips, I'm assuming you're gonna go, to sh you're gonna go shopping, haul a lot of things inside of this, maybe you'll go to Ikea. Who knows what you're gonna do from the time that you buy this car till the time you end up eventually selling it. So, the good news is that there is, if you lift this out of the way, you're looking at 27.2 cubic feet of trunk space. Not enough trunk space for you? Not a problem. If you fold down the back seats, which we'll do in a second, you get 60.3 feet of trunk space. That's a lot of trunk space, come on now. Hello. Let's see if we can put these seats down so I can show you all the additional trunk space that you're gonna be able to find here. There goes one. There goes two. And here comes number three. So, is this thing big enough to sleep inside of? Let's find out. Of course, you would have to get rid of this here, but once you do, plenty of room to sleep inside of it. So, in case you wanted to know how tall I am, I'm close to 5'7", so I'm not the tallest person in the world, but those front seats can go further back, and then when you do, you could probably have a slumber party in here. All right, let's go put these seats back and show you the inside. So, to put the seats back, just gotta pull up here and push it right back you hear a little clunk. Now, unfortunately, it does not go back to the position you had it before. You have to sit on the seat, pull this, and then extend yourself back. It'll go back as much as this much, or it'll go forward. Aside from that, the door trim, the fit and finish, the feeling, everything feels top quality. Even the plastics here feel pretty good. Now, I can't really tell if this is plastic or if it's metal, but clicking on it, it does feel good. The buttons, they feel good, high quality. Everything is leather. You have a lot of different functions here for your seats. The seats are nice and comfortable. The rear leg room is plenty for someone like myself. Like I said, I'm about 5'7", so it fits me pretty well. Take a look at this, there's tons of headroom. This could potentially be good for someone who's about 6'3", and lower. If you're a really tall statured person, I think this would work really well for you. Other than that, the seats are pretty comfortable. They could be moved forwards or backwards. Like right now I move the seats all the way to the front. Why would you do this? Maybe to make more space for the back. You have a 12 volt plug in the back and you have USB connectors in the back because people that are gonna sit here for long trips, they're definitely, definitely gonna need it. Your command center in the front for whoever that's driving up front, you can see it looks very high quality. Everything is beautiful looking and immaculate condition. So now that we're inside here, let's talk a little bit about the fit and trim. And the first thing I wanna start off with is that I, as you may already know, I have a Porsche 911. I have a Carrera S, it's a 2014 model, and it is fitted with full leather. So, touching the interior of this car, touching the surfaces, it definitely feels high quality. Although I will say that it doesn't feel as good as a 911 would, the interior leather of a 911 is a lot better than this. You're talking about a sports car with, an, with a starting price of $115,000 versus an asking price of $67,000 for this SUV. Oh, there I go again, I called it an SUV, sorry. Everything feels high quality to the touch. The stitching is very, very nicely done. The seats feel like they're very, very nice leather. You have Napa leather on the steering wheel as well as the gear shift lever. And you have this big, beautiful LCD screen that we're gonna get into in a future video, uh, in the next video or two that's gonna be coming along for this particular vehicle. And I'm gonna create an LCD review that I'm gonna go through every single detail. But for now, let's get into some of the little details that are in this cockpit once you're sitting in the driver's seat. For your viewing pleasure, I wanna show you the electronics and I wanna show you what all these functions do here. Just like your apartment or your home, your bedroom is where all the magic happens. And in this vehicle, all the magic happens right over here. As soon as you turn on your car, you are automatically greeted with this beautiful color LCD screen that you're looking at here. Everything is touchscreen on this. So right now I'm using Apple CarPlay. I have connected it to my phone, but you can click on home. It'll give you all your different settings over here. The maps that you're looking at right now are Google Maps. When you purchase this vehicle, from scratch, option it out, get it delivered to your door. You get 12 months of 
navigation with Google Maps, as well as the electronics and the AT&T LTE built in for 12 months for free. After the 12 months are completed, you pay $20 a month for the LTE service, which gets you the Google Maps and it updates everything on the fly for you. But most people like myself and like you, we're probably gonna be using our phone's built-in CarPlay. So here's CarPlay. I get my Google Maps. I get my iPod. I get my telephone features. You can change your sound systems. You can add devices and you can set everything up. Uh, of course, like I mentioned, we're not going to get too much into this. I'll, I'll go into a complete detailed overview of the electronics in my next video, but stay tuned for that. Please, if you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Let's move on to this section over here. All right, so I'm pretty happy that this vehicle is equipped with vented seats. I think we'll turn it on right now. When you're touching the vented seats and certain buttons here, you have this hap haptic feedback. And I think it's pretty cool, but sometimes I want to move the air vents up and down. And I have done this in the last couple of hours that I've played with this car. And unfortunately, I touched some of these surfaces. The surfaces are very, very sensitive, uh, but I like the fact that there are some mechanical uh, buttons here. You have mechanical buttons that lower and increase the temperature, that lower and increase the vents, how much air comes out. You have this button over here, in case you don't want to use the LCD, you can change certain things from here with this little round button. The volume can be controlled using this little volume button and you have your hazard button in the middle. Nice and big hazard button. Your park sensor, you can turn that on. The same buttons that are on this side, you also have on this side. My car, unfortunately, is not equipped with all the bells and whistles but it does have the sport function and I can turn that on. So for my use, there's normal, there's sport, and then individual, you can change all that stuff on the fly. I haven't really got that much into it, but I will get into it once again on my full LCD review when I, when I do all that stuff. But everything is laid out pretty well. Everything is laid out in a, in a uniform way where it's not difficult for me to figure out what's what. Everything is pretty intuitive. I can change most of the menus directly from here or I can do it directly from the touch screen. So if you're driving, probably better to do it from here. If you're not driving, then you can tap everything directly on the LCD screen. All right, moving on to the dash. So in traditional 911s where this dash came from, current generation made the center dial, which is analog, which is something that I love. And then these two dials, which you see on the left and the right side, those are all LCD. So as soon as I turn on the car, they light up like a Christmas tree. Check this out. This button here basically controls this middle function. And you have your front and rear drive distribution. You got your G-force meter. You got your GPS where you currently are. And then you have your trip computer and your engine temperature, oil temperature, your battery level, and all the other good stuff that you need. All right, guys, we have talked about the exterior, some of the features that you would get with this car, and we talked about the interior. So now there's only one thing left to do. Take it for a spin. Let's see what it's like. So putting your foot on the brakes, selecting drive, putting your hands on the steering wheel. How does it feel? Feels pretty good. I like it. Driving this car around as I am right now, I'm in a parking lot. It feels rather large because it is rather large. 4,500 pounds for this vehicle and you can feel it. Currently the mode that I'm driving in right now is the normal mode. So in this car, it's outfitted with normal, sport, and individual. So the two functions that I have right now is normal. I'm gonna stick to normal for right now for B roads, but we're gonna kick it up into sport mode once we're on the highway and going a little bit faster. And we might switch it around a little bit just so you guys can get the feel of how this thing works out. Overall, the, the ride quality is pretty plush. I'm going over some bumps right now and it's taking it in with pretty good ease. It's a pretty quiet environment you're inside of here. You don't hear anything. So I just got out of the parking lot, stepped on the gas just a little bit, plenty of acceleration. You won't be driving this car and think it's yourself. It's a base model and it just does not have enough. A lot of braking pressure. I'm not really pushing that much hard on the brakes, but it works very well. 40 miles an hour at the moment, cruising around town. This thing is in automatic mode. The transmission on this is an eight speed Tiptronic. I can change everything here with the side paddles if I wanted to, but why? I like driving this car comfortably. In and around bends, I could have totally imagined doing that, but around town, 
definitely not necessary. I like the fact that this has ventilated seats. As I'm driving, it's about 80 something degrees at the moment. And the ventilated seats are definitely coming in handy at the moment. Whoever that priced out this car, I guess the dealership did, and got it, priced it out really, really well. They included all the options I would include it myself. Uh, we got the leather trim interior, which makes the whole driving experience a whole lot better. I feel like this has all the bells and electronics that I would add in a car or I would buy in a car myself. You got this beautiful got you got this beautiful LCD screen right in set right in the center. I feel like everybody's copying Tesla these days. But you also have a beautiful dash. You got this gorgeous steering wheel. The fit and finish is really nicely well done. Two big cup, cup holders here. Now, what I like about this is that it feels very luxurious. It doesn't have the big throaty engine. I feel like in the V8 versions that you would get with the upper echelon models, you hear more of the engine and it's more of a sports car than a luxury vehicle, in my opinion. It's a sports luxury vehicle at that point. But if I'm gonna get a car like this, I want it to be used as a daily driven vehicle and as a daily driven vehicle I don't really feel like it needs anything else besides the turbocharged V6 engine that this already provides. With 330 foot-pounds of torque and over 300 horsepower, what more can you want in a daily driven vehicle? I think paying 67500 is already enough. With, with the included options, you're looking probably at an $80,000 vehicle out the door. So I don't know if you can tell, probably not because you're facing me, but we are on the highway at the moment and I have no idea how I got to 90 miles an hour so quickly, but you get there pretty fast. And if you're not watching where you, how fast you're going, you'll definitely hit triple digits very, very quickly. So right now it's reporting that I'm in eighth gear and you can go down in gears just by toggling these paddle shifters. So right now I dropped to 68 miles per hour and I'm in third gear. But it's so seamless when you don't when you go down in gears, you don't feel like you're being jerked around and the suspension isn't getting disturbed by that. So I'm in seventh gear, it brought me back to seventh gear. So if you go down in gear, let's just say you want to pass somebody, you go down in gear, you go down a couple of gears like I just did right now, you're in fourth right now. To give it the beans, I just gave it full open wide open throttle right now. So it's got plenty of go with the standard trim option that you already have here. Overall, the, the, the suspension is pretty soft, I believe. It's really plush. You really don't hear a lot of the outdoor elements. Like you don't hear that. You don't hear the wind that much. You can have a conversation with your spouse or your family member, or your girlfriend, boyfriend, whoever that's going to be in the car with you. Uh, there's no uh, noise coming in from the outside. Very little noise coming in from the tires hitting the floor, hitting the ground as it's moving. That's a different story. You're going to hear that even with a quiet Tesla these days. But regardless, it's a very quiet interior. I think they did a pretty good job with sound deadening. Overall, the seat is pretty comfortable. The steering wheel feels pretty good ergonomically, practicality-wise, with the abundant amount of space that I have uh, for my legs. I'm really not a tall person, so leg room is something that I never, ever complain about, believe it or not. But ergonomically speaking, for someone of my stature, or perhaps someone of your stature, if you're 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 5'10", doesn't matter. Plenty of space here. The steering wheel electronically can be brought back, can be brought forward and up and down depending on how you like it. Let's see if I can demonstrate for you guys. So as I'm driving, I can bring it up, bring it back down and bring it closer to me if I wanted to. Wow, that's really close. Probably dangerously close. So right now we're in normal mode, but I'm going to kick it up a notch to sport mode, see what that's like. All right, so that's wide open throttle. Yeah, you got plenty of go on this car. Overall visibility is pretty good. I can see my back. I can see the entire back window in the back. Pretty good visibility with the side mirrors. Pretty good visibility with the side windows. Even if I wanted to look back, I got pretty good visibility with the back windows. Huge windshield in the front makes everything pretty visible as well. Luxurious cockpit environment makes it very inviting for long road trips. So I imagine if you own something like this, you're going to want to take some nice long road trips. So with something like this, I can definitely see myself racking up miles, taking this car, going all the way from the West Coast, all the way down to the East Coast and back. I can definitely see myself doing that. All right, let's see if we can get off this highway, take it on normal B roads and see what she's like. All right, here's some normal B roads for us. Traffic lights and all the other stuff that you're probably going to encounter whenever you start driving this car. Sitting at a traffic light, not a bad experience at all. 
brakes work pretty well. Surprisingly, the car is so quiet. I don't hear anything from outside. We're gonna get a part of the road where it's gonna get pretty bumpy and I wanna test it out, see how it works out. And here in San Diego, I am fortunate enough to have roads that are in pretty good condition. We really don't get that much rain and snow and sleet here. So the conditions in San Diego are pretty good. But there are situations where you will encounter bumps on the road, a couple of potholes here and there. Let's, let's figure out how that works. So, we're going to be getting to that little stretch of bumpy road pretty soon. I'm going to tell you if it's a plush ride or not. Here's the road I was talking about. I'm going to count to 10 while we drive through it. And I want you to hear my voice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. I didn't feel a single thing this this car definitely took the bumps very very well as far as the suspension test is concerned it definitely passed it with flying colors passengers that are sitting next to you they're gonna have a great time the infotainment LCD screens got a plethora of different options for you to mess around with all of your gadgets are there your telephony options your Apple CarPlay uh, you can listen to music all that stuff now if you're into juvenile fun like I am off the line this thing does zero to 60 in 5.6 seconds. You'll definitely have cars behind you getting smaller and smaller. So if you're into that kind of thing, with the optional chrono package that is equipped with this car, you're doing zero to 60 in 5.6 seconds. Base model does 5.9. And obviously the, the uh, well-equipped $160,000 versions of this car are gonna have zero to 60 in 3.9 seconds. Those are bolted on with electric, motors that get you there really quickly you get the best in technology that's available in porsche at the current moment and it's it's kind of like the the way things are going to be from now on porsche is going to start putting these type of technologies in their 911 cars and eventually one day these kind of cars are all going to be electric and it's slowly getting there so to summarize everything that we've talked about so far if you're in store for a 2020 cayenne you have many many different types of cayennes that you can choose from you have two different uh, body styles. You have this version that I'm driving at the current moment, and then you have a coupe version, which is kind of like a slanted back. It's a bit more sportier, and in my opinion, it does look a little bit better, but it comes at an extra cost of almost $10,000, so you have to factor all that stuff in there. Aside from that, there are 12 different variants for this vehicle. So, six variants for the model that I'm driving now, and six variants for the coupe version. But, what you're getting is the best Porsche has developed thus far for the Cayenne. You have this gorgeous LCD screen, you have this gorgeous uh, interior that is inviting, that is just a pleasure to drive inside of. You're doing long road trips in this type of vehicle, and you're gonna have a fantastic time getting there. You won't be tired. For the base model that I'm driving right now, it's probably equipped with about $15,000 of options. You have full leather, you have etching, the Porsche etching on the headrests. On every single headrest is a Porsche etching. You have uh, heated seats, you have ventilated seats, you have the panoramic sunroof. There's a couple of options that are in this car that uh, will increase the price, but these are things that you honestly don't wanna live without. Feeling what the ventilated seats feel like and uh, feeling what the, the leather feels like on the dash and on the seats, it's something that honestly, if I buy this car, I, I'm not gonna be able to live without it. I'll feel very left out if I don't get these optional extras. So highly suggested if you get this car, make sure you get the extras. Your ride will definitely be a lot more enjoyable. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this review. I'm going to be doing a lot more car reviews similar to this one. So if you're new to the channel, please do me a favor, hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel. But the subscribe will allow my channel to grow. And as a result of that, I'll create more con content for you guys. So thank you so much for joining me once again for another episode. And a big, huge shout out to Porsche of San Diego. I currently have my car at Porsche of San Diego. So after I'm done with this, I'm going to go pick up my car. But if you guys need anything, definitely give Ray Roper a call. He'll definitely take care of you really well. He's my service guy. And if you need to purchase a new vehicle, make sure you contact Daniel. He's my sales guy. Ultimate people. Daniel's been there for about 30 years. And Ray Roper has been there for a very long time as well. They know what they're doing. So take care, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, 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 oh,